has been another brilliant match here at Dubai International Stadium. The crowd loving it. It coming right down till he really was loving it, right down to the last ball. A very happy dug out there uh, for the Dubai Capitals, picking up the win on the last ball. It really was quite the nail-biter in those last couple of overs. As you can see, the Capitals won by four wickets today. Some standout performances from both parties, in fact. And one of those from the Dubai Capitals we're going to speak to very shortly, Ben Dunk, with a superb 59. And if we take a look at the points table, both teams were desperate for a win tonight. And the Capitals pop right on up to second. It's amazing what a couple of points can do, a difference that it can make. The Vipers sitting on the bottom of the table with work to do as we reach the halfway stage of the DP World ILT20. Wazim well, Akram, Niall O'Brien and the man of the moment, Ben Dung, joining us. Ben, how are you? Are you all right? You looked a bit puffed actually out there at some points. Are you doing OK now? Well, uh, I guess getting puffed's a good thing. Uh, I was trying to get Sikander and a few of the boys to maybe hit some more boundaries so I wouldn't have to run. But uh, look, it was an awesome win. Tell us about being out there in the middle, um, how it felt off the bat, because you haven't had maybe as, as, as good a run into this tournament as you would have liked, but you certainly made up for it tonight. Absolutely spot on. I was really disappointed with, uh, you know, I've, I've, I had some really good opportunities down in Sharjah for the team um, and didn't take those. So, you know, I really felt tonight was probably a bit of a do or die, not only from a team point of view, but also personally, you know. So it was nice to get some runs and, and even better to get the win. And Ben, uh, today, there was the first day I think there was no due. Did that make any difference batting second or it was difficult? Yeah, I mean, I must admit, we spoke about uh, at half time how good it was going to be batting second and uh, the slow balls seemed to grip a lot more yeah. and uh, the ball seemed to hold up a lot more than previous games here. So um, it'll be interesting to see how that trend continues in the I tournament. Think the reason being the wind and, of course, it was cloudy as well. That's why hence no due. Usually in last five games, we've seen six games, team batting second, they won easily. Yeah, and that's what we assumed would happen. You know, we, we were pretty confident because they got off to a great start. Yeah. Um, and we were staring down the barrel of chasing 200. So for the boys to claw that back um, to 170 made a huge difference. But, um, you know, I won't say the wicket was difficult just because I got runs, but it sure. certainly wasn't as true as, you know, we, we might have expected. Sure. We can say it was difficult to bat <laughs> on for you. We can do that, no worries. <laughs> Too kind. But talk us through how the feelings were in the dugout as that final ball was bowled. I don't think, I mean, as a Kiwi, I don't like super overs at the best of times, but it was a bit nervy. By the barest of margins, he got <laughs> home. Um, oh, look. To be honest, I didn't realise there was a super over if uh, if it was a tie. I only found out late. So, um, Rovman and Jace, two international superstars at the crease. I was pretty confident when we needed, I think, six off the last over. I started to get a little bit sweaty and a bit nervous when it was two from two. But um, we got the win, and hopefully we can really build with that now. Niall, another exciting, um, another exciting final over in a match here. Just four needed off, actually, that over. Talk us through, from your perspective, you're watching up in the com box. Um, were, were you sure that the Capitals had in the bat? We won't tell Ben what you say. Uh, well, obviously in the box seat, I thought Colin Moreau actually captained really well because he got his field placing in the right place. He, he knew he had to take a bit of a gamble. I thought Patharana bowled superbly well. Another half chance of runner. That was, it was a game of missed runouts, really. Like, Bang in a Yorker. This is a chance. I think that's the fourth miss run out of the innings. And Dubai Capitals also missed four run outs. So it was one of those stages they just couldn't hit them. Brilliant. Wide Yorker. Execution under pressure. This is a brilliant field. He just pity. He couldn't maybe roll over MacGyver like and just throw the stumps down. And another miss. Um, oh. So another chance. You know, they had the chances, the Vipers, and we said it last year, they're the worst fielding team last season. This season, they've also been the worst fielding, dropping catches, missing runouts, but in the end, the Capitals, yeah, they deserved the win. It was great oh. for the tournament to get another game down to and the I wire. I think their plan was to have a go at the 19th over. That's what they did against Shaheen Afridi because uh, Powell, who was looking really good, he struggled against Pati Rana. He couldn't pick him up, am I right? Yeah, I think I think that's a common tactic now as well. You don't want to take yeah. it too deep. You know, sure. you don't want to leave too much pressure on that last over. And full credit, I mean, six unbelievable Yorkers really um, yeah. from the bowlers. So, um, you know, like I said, the international superstars there at the end we were pretty confident, um, and a big second last over really helped that. But again, if you know, full credit, six out of six under pressure uh, against two powerful uh, batsmen as well. And um, one of them was well set. And like you said, another brilliant slow ball too. 
Yeah, with his action, it's difficult to pick his slow ball. It is, it is. It actually, you know, we were talking up in the dugout um, a long time ago when I was a little bit younger facing Lassif Malinga, and, it, yeah, and it's got yeah. some real similarities where, you know, you're trying to search for the ball um, and it's coming down at good pace and then all of a sudden he throws in the slow ball and, uh, and it almost ball dips a dips little bit. As yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, he's got a huge career ahead of him. He's, he's very young. He's only played two first-class games and I think he eventually will finish up white ball, white ball specialist. Well, potentially. If yeah. you keep bowling death overs like that, I think he'll be a popular man. <laughs> OK, so if we had gone to a super over, would you have stepped up? Because you, you seem to be hitting it pretty nicely <laughs> out there. Would you? Very good question. A very go? good question. I had, I had sort of, you know, put the cue in the rack uh, and thought that that was the game. You but, um, I mean, it's hard to go past Rovman and Jace in terms of absolute power. Um, so maybe just roll those two guys out. Maybe a Gerbaz or a Davy Warner as well. Throw them all the big dogs in there and um, let's see what happens. Three. You can only use three. <laughs> yeah, so. <you> <laughs> Let's talk about your innings tonight. Did it feel easy from ball one? Did you have to do some work out there or, or talk us through it? Um, look, I just wanted to keep the, the positive frame of mind that I'd gone into the last couple of innings. I just needed to be a little bit smarter and execute a little bit better, you know. Um, and I, I, was, I was fortunate enough to have played against the two guys, um, both Shaheen Shah and, and Muhammad Amir, quite a lot. So I, I kind of knew what they were going to try and do in terms of swing it away and um, that experience, you know, helped me set up. But, um, look, it's just nice to get some runs, and to be honest. When you're out of touch, Ben, a couple of shots you played early on, especially the first boundary you hit, that extra cover, that probably given you a lot of confidence yet. It looks like a good my day. Yeah, it's amazing what the middle of the bat feels like when you haven't felt it for a while was. Um, and, and, you know, again, against two quality bowlers, it was nice to get off to that start um, and, yeah, just get the win and, and get some runs. When you are um, having it, not the time that you would like out in the middle, what, what does it take sometimes for it to click into place for you? Is it as simple as getting ball on bat right in the middle of it, or what, what is it for you? Yeah, for me, I've learnt over time just to try and shut out the noise. Um, you know, as, as with any sort of franchise league around, there's a lot of opinions and, and from, from fellow players and, and, and from people back home, your coaches back home, and, and sometimes it's, it's good just to shut all the noise out and watch the ball. And, you know, I was saying in my mind tonight, like, just watch the ball as hard as you possibly can. Keep the intent and let's just see what happens. And um, fortunate enough to find the middle of that. Your, your director of cricket, uh, Vedigopal Rao, said to us before the game, you'll go well today. I just want you to give yourself 10 balls. You are 25 off 10 balls. So by you giving yourself the chance to get in and actually just focusing on the ball, you got yourself in such a great position to put the bad ball away. Yeah, and that's really key for my batting. Like I said, um, you know, in charge, uh, I just didn't execute, to be honest. You know, I, had, I was really clear in my mind about what I wanted to do. But unfortunately, you know, the bowlers at this level are pretty good as well. And, and, and sometimes it doesn't come off. Um, and I was just sort of lucky today that, you know, a, a few of my shots actually went in the gap rather than the fielders. And you sort of get that momentum and, and you're away. Sounded nice too. I'm liking hearing this again. Talk us through um, what happened when you got your 50. Is that how you imagined you'd bring up your 50? Let's have a little look at this. Uh, well, he actually owes me a couple, I think, there, Raza. I, I think that might have gone for four. Um, he was pretty happy with his dance moves there. He, he was saying, did you see my break dance? And I was saying, get out of the road, mate. You know, it's hard enough to get some runs here. Um, oh, look. Uh, yeah, it was, it, was, it was one of those moments... Uh, <laughs> That ricocheted off. Originally, I thought, uh, you know, it might have hit him in a, in a place where uh, he might not might not have liked it too much. But he he responded well and ran the two for me, and, and we got away with it. And I also thought that you probably will struggle a bit. A lot of batters do at this level against the great Tasaranga. But you had a plan against him, didn't you? If you see a leg break, you're going towards mid-wicket, am I right? Yeah, that's right. I was sort of trying to set up um, for his wrong end. I, all yeah. the footage that I saw to the left hand is he likes to, to bowl the wrong end or the googly. So I was setting up for that. And then as soon as I saw the leg spinner, I thought, I'm going to go with it to leg side. So um, absolute class bowler. Yeah. And, you know, today I was lucky to get, to get one or two away. Um, but I'm trying to keep the game plan really simple realistically, you know, hit with the spin and, and let's see what happens. Yeah, brilliant. Let's talk about the team as a whole. Dubai Capital's amazing what a win can do. Two points. You're sitting up the top of the, the leaderboard there now. How is David Warner, your captain, a guy I'm sure you've spent a lot of time with, how, he's not had a great time of late with the bat, but he seems so into it on the field. Looks like he's really stepped up in the captaincy role and enjoying that. Tell us what it's like from your point of view. Yeah, absolutely. You know, there's probably no doubt that he, he hasn't got the runs that he would have liked, but, I mean, you don't, you don't play 300-odd international games without you know, it going around in roundabouts and, and hopefully, you know, that the middle of the bat's not too far away for him and, and we know for a fact that, you know, if he gets us off to a start, you know, we're probably going to win the game. 
um, you know, the guys of, of that pedigree um, with that international career, it, you know, it's just a matter of time. Were you to, oh, sorry, now you go. No, I just think you've, you've probably been through exactly the same uh, rock that David Warner has been through. This is the case, when you're looking through the video, is he just trying too hard? Oh, he's definitely heavily invested in this tournament, this this team as a leader, and he's desperate to do well. So, I mean, he, he's been great around the guys. One of the great things about Davey, and, you know, he's my age. I've known him since we were, we were very, very young. He always remains pretty level, whether he's getting runs or not. And um, like I said, it, I think runs are just around the corner for him. That must be great if you yourself are going through a bit of a mean trot uh, with the bats not going as well as you'd like to watch a guy who's played that many games as well also just stay exactly the same. Is that, does that it help is, you? Yeah, it's a great learning, you know. It, it is a great learning, you know. There's an old saying, I think, you know, if you score runs, you're never as good as you think you are. And if you don't score runs, you're never as bad as you think you are. And, and I think the key to to these leagues, and, and especially this one, is is remaining level, both individually, but also as a team. You know, we were second on the ladder when we went to Sharjah. All of a sudden, we were fifth on the ladder coming back, and, um, and now we're back to second. So, you know, it's really important if we can just maintain, you know, that composure and, and, and keep it level, not ride the waves too much. I think that'll set us up for a good tournament. In terms of level of professionalism, we saw Niall actually at the top of the show before the game started having a bit of a word to him. Nyla didn't work, whatever you said. Um, but, uh, man, if he'd come off tonight, you would have looked like a genius. Um, but he seems just so professional in the way he goes about it. And it's important for yourself, too, with all your experience. The young guys in your group, they must be just lapping up watching you guys go about your business. I think they're lapping up watching Dave go about their business. I, I, I uh, you know, very kind to group me with him. Um, I, that's the great thing about this kind of tournament you know once you start you know we've got Max Holden who's a young guy who's you know up and coming for England for him to get to work with Davey and see that professionalism day in day out and see how he trains and prepares um, you know can only be beneficial for Max and um, you know that's the that's the influence that they have. It absolutely is and we so appreciate your time tonight your innings was awesome to watch we loved it congratulations on the win we'll let you go and get in an ice bath or whatever it is that you need oh, to do. So now. professional that's all right thank you very much. <laughs> Never yeah. an ice bath. Not a beer at all. Thank you so much. <laughs> all right it's actually time for us to find out a little more about the star that is Ben Dunk. <laughs> What's your favourite holiday destination? Ireland. Favourite cheat meal? Oh, there's lots of them. Uh, pizza, hot chips, yeah, everything. What do you do when you're not playing cricket? Golf. Which teammate of yours could be a movie star? I think David Warner fancies himself. <laughs> Who would play you in your biopic? Jason Statham. What's your biggest fear? Sharks. What's your best quality? My positivity. What is your worst quality? My golf swing. Who's your cricket idol? Adam Gilchrist. And finally, what has been the biggest Baval moment of your life? My biggest Baval moment of my life was the birth of my first son. He came six weeks early and uh, yeah, it was a whirlwind, but six years later, it's, uh, it's been great. I didn't think Aussies were allowed to be scared of sharks. That's what he said. What are you scared Every of? Every Aussie is scared of sharks. I'm married to one. <laughs> I know. We were in Maldives uh, in September, I think uh, before the first season of uh, DP World RT20. We had a meeting and we went, I, they said, okay, we'll let you take you to the shark snorkeling. They were nurse sharks. She said, I'm an Australian, I'm, I'm not getting into the water. <laughs> she never got into the water because they're so scared of sharks. It feels wrong. It feels wrong. No, it's very not wrong. actually. A lot of people eaten by sharks. In Australia. <laughs> I love sharks. Right. I love sharks. <laughs> But I can't I swim. Want to talk about catches, well, a different kind of catch, actually. One that we saw tonight, Patarana, um, was, I think he's massively in contention uh, for another catch of the tournament. Have a look at this. What is it about this tournament that, that we're only halfway through? We've already had some absolute stunners. Yeah, and fast bowlers running over their left shoulder. Think of Trent Bolt twice now. Not an easy catch. Probably the most difficult because the ball is always curving away. Make the ground quickly. That's the key. Make the ground quickly and get yourself I think a base. It's, it's, okay, Trent Bold we expect. He's a Kiwi. He's a very athletic. But this guy, this catch is for me is the best so far. He's 20, 21 years old, Sri Lankan, and having this catch under pressure. That two of one of the main batters from the opposition. Incredible. 
I think it's amazing because if I look up into those lights now, yeah. it makes my eyes go a bit funny. So it is a very impressive catch. And we have had plenty in this tournament. Thank you guys so much for your time. What we're going to do is we're going to have a look at the top five catches of the tournament so far. Then we're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll look at tomorrow's big matchup. Brilliance in the field is a hallmark of DP World ILT20, and the players aren't letting us down in Season 2. Here's our pick of the top five catches of the tournament so far. Our first stunner is from match number two, a diving effort superbly snagged by Dubai capital Sam Billings to account for My Emirates' Will Smead. Next up, My Emirates' Emirates Pace Ace, Ace Trent Bolt's catch to get rid of Basil Hamid of the Sharjah Warriors. A bolt from the blue, you could say. That man Billings is back again. This time it's the golf giants James Vince left a gate as Superman Sam jumps to take a great catch at long off. A true catch of the season contender at the Dubai International Stadium as the Desert Vipers' Ali Nasir takes this blinder at gully to get rid of my Emirates danger man Nick Puran. The superb effort helping the Vipers to a much-needed win. And then the incredible athleticism of my Emirates' Trent Bolt is on display yet again as he takes a one-handed stunner to send poor Laurie Evans back to the pavilion. catching gems. Stay tuned for more to come throughout the tournament. Welcome back to Cricket Safari. A great night out for the Dubai Capitals and the Dubai Derby winning by four wickets on the last ball of a must-win matchup at the second half of this tournament as it gets underway. A huge win for them, taking them to second on the points table. Superstar West Indian Rodman Powell really was a star, bringing it home for his team. I've got Rohan Gaviskar, Darren Ganga alongside me. Uh, Darren, how crucial is he in those clutch moments that we saw tonight? Well, he's shown it uh, at the international level for the West Indies. He captains the West Indies uh, T20 international side. Before this game, his highest score was 10. Although he's played five matches, he had two not out, so not much of an opportunity for him previous to this game. But what this situation required was for him to be responsible, and that he did. It wasn't a, a swashbuckling innings per se because he was striking at 125. He was able to play the situation quite well. Darren, I think that was what was most impressive about this innings, was it was against his natural game. He realised what the situation was, that he needed to play a responsible innings. He had to curb what his natural instincts are to make sure his team got over the line, and he did that perfectly. And that, for me, was more impressive than when he plays those big innings. But that comes naturally to him. So I thought this was a fabulous innings from him. It's great. And you can tell that team is buoyed massively by the win tonight. We saw them getting their photo there. They're looking pretty happy. We actually found out a little bit more about Robin Powell before the tournament started. If you, if you know me, you know that I don't talk a lot. I'm very soft-spoken. I'm a very quiet person. You know, I can be in the room and you don't know that I'm in the room because I'm not saying a lot. I think it's just me and me staying true to who I am. It's one where I just try to let my back do the talking. I smash the ball and see if I can break a few windows. You know, when bowlers come in the arc and you hit them out of the park. And picks the bones out of that one as well. You know, sometimes it don't, it don't come off, but whenever it come off, it's a beautiful spectacle. As a child, I watched all the hard work my mom did to put food on our table, you know, and now is my time in trying to repair, repair in the sense of making things as easy as possible for her. I think once you do well, you make cricket a career choice. You know, you work hard and fortunately, it's a career where you can, after you do well, you can take care of your family. Rob, is it different to be here this uh, in this season uh, just as a player? I mean, obviously you were the captain last time. Yeah, I think there's a lot of difference, you know. Don't have to attend all those long, John or boring captains meeting. You know, but having said that, it was good leading the franchise last year. You know, now is is an opportunity for me in a capacity as just a batter to, to you know, bring my skills to the table and hopefully I can make meaningful contributions to the team.
My personal goal is to just to see if I can go one better than I did last year. Last year I scored 300 plus runs, close to 400 runs. You know, hopefully this season I can go a little bit, maybe over 400 or so. Great to see him in action tonight. And there is plenty more action coming for you in the DP World ILT20. Tomorrow, it's my Emirates taking on the Sharjah Warriors from Abu Dhabi, which will be a very interesting match. I had my first game at Abu Dhabi. Beautiful venue. I'm very much looking forward to this game, which is, is huge. Another huge game in the grand scheme of this tournament. Dwayne Bravo is one I'm going to be watching out for, Darren. How do you think he's going to go out there? Well, he's shown that he's still capable of taking wickets and bowling in those difficult situations in a T20 match. Only four wickets so far, but I think what he also brings to this team is, is that knowledge of how to bowl in different situations, uh, how he works with the young players, how he shares information with Trent Bolt and the younger bowlers. Uh, Faruqi has grown in stature, so sometimes you don't see the real value of a player in the statistics before you. Dwayne Bravo has brought a different sort of teamwork to this My Emirates side. And I think if you had to, to point to a department of the game that this team has dominated in, it's definitely with the ball. How they take wickets and penetrate in the power play and how they're able to defend uh, bowling in the last five, bowling in difficult situations when the team requires a wicket. Bravo is the go-to man to Nicholas Poran. Yeah, we talk about responsibility and people having to step up at different moments, especially in these close games. We've seen it happen on two occasions, Robin Powell tonight. Uh, Tim David with the bat, how crucial could he be in a oh, clutch moment? Well, extremely crucial, and that's why I think I was a little disappointed in that game where they sent him after Akil Hussain uh, and Ambati Raidu. I think he's the kind of batter. I've said this before, you can't pigeonhole him as someone who's just a finisher when you need big runs uh, at maybe 9 or 10. If he bats about 30 deliveries, who knows what he could do? He could get about 70, 80. So listen, I, I think Tim Davis is a, a match winner. And, and you've, you've got to, as soon as 10 overs are done, he's got to be going in. The Warriors, it's an interesting one because they sort of seem to have found some form. They've had two wins on the bounce now. And we've always talked about on paper they look like a great team. It just hasn't always worked, but they look good. Tekshana with the ball, his second forfa uh, just the other night in Sharjah. That is an interesting player to watch. Yeah, he's an all fears bowler. 11 wickets uh, to his name. He can bowl in that far play. What he does is he swings the ball. He's got variety. He varies his pace. He's a smart and guileful bowler because he's able to work batters out, bull that do throw a knuckleball that goes away from the right handers. He can up the pace as well as a spin bowler. If you're asking for a bowler in a T20 match, it's this guy. It is a, a very interesting matchup and I can't wait for tomorrow. Now look, Rohan, I'm hesitant to ask you because Darren's 100% here, but who have you got tomorrow? I'm going to go with my Emirates. Okay, Darren. I feel you're, try you're, you're trying to break me here. I'm, I'm not quite sure as yet. Give me the chance to go down there to Abu Dhabi and then make a decision. You can't. Oh, just, just gut feel. I'll sit on just the fence the for now. You're going to sit, you can't sit Please. on the fence. Please. Okay. Yeah, okay. It is a 100% record and we don't want to break that. It does look good. Rohan, we got some work to do, my friend. Thank you guys so much uh, for your time today. It went down to the last ball today here at Dubai International Stadium. What does Abu Dhabi have in store for us? tomorrow on the DP World ILT20. We'll find out soon. See you then.